In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at using the sine law or the cosine law. So we talked about this in the last lesson, so we're going to continue to look at these two laws and how we can use them, um, sometimes combine using them to find a missing piece of information in a triangle. So for both of these triangles, we want to find the, the indicated unknown, so the piece that is indicated. In A, we're looking for this side X, and in B, we're looking for angle A. So let's start with the first one. So looking at the first one, we want to know, am I going to use sine law or cosine law? The easiest one I think to, that I personally think to check for is cosine law, because you're looking for two things. You're looking for all three sides, or you're looking for that sandwiched angle. So right now we have two sides, or we're missing a third. So that crosses off the first option. And we don't have a sandwiched angle anywhere. We do have two sides, but we're missing this angle here that would give us that sandwiched angle that would allow us to use the cosine law. So in this case, we can't use cosine law. So that means we are going to have to use sine law. So I'm just going to label these sides just to help us. We'll say A, B, and X. Now using sine law, we need a full pair and a half pair, right? Or one angle and its corresponding side, and then another angle or side. In this case, we do have a full pair here, that angle and that side. Now the only other other half pair or other information that we can use is 21, which would allow us to use sine law to find our unknown angle of A. Now, even though that's not the so or that's not the piece of information we're looking for, we might have to find that first to then allow us to, uh, to find that missing side. So let's go ahead and use the sine law to find that unknown angle A. So sine A over little a equals sine B over little b. Sine of our unknown angle over 21 is equal to sine of 78 over 25. We've plugged in our information. The first step is to cross multiply. 25 comes up. 25 times sine A is equal to 21 times sine 78. Bring the 25 over to the other side to get the sine A by itself. We get 21 times sine 78 divided by 25. We get that sine A is equal to 0.82. Now looking at that, you say, okay, well, that's clearly not an angle. That's too small of a number to be an angle. And you'd be right. right? Remember, when we're, anytime we're looking for an angle, we want to use the inverse of whatever ratio we're dealing with. So in this case, we're going to use the inverse of sine, or sine negative 1, 0 0.82. And we get an angle, or angle A is equal to 55.25. Now that we know that missing angle, it doesn't, we still can't find that unknown side. But what we can do now is we can now find this third missing angle because all the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. So 180 minus 78 minus 55.25, we get 46.75. Now that we have all of our, un, all of our angles, can now make a half pair with our missing side and use our sine law. We could also use um, the cosine law because now we do have a sandwiched angle that will allow us to find X. Um, we can use sine law as well. Um, it really just depends on what we're comfortable with or what we prefer. I do prefer using the sine law. I find it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna use the sine law, sine X equals sine B over little b. In this one here, we could use the sine a over little a as well because that is also a full pair that we now have. So again, either one is fine. Um, I'm using the original one because I know those numbers are right. So sine of our angle of 46.75 divided by our unknown side is equal to sine of 78 over 25. 
filled in our information. So let's cross multiply now to get rid of these fractions. So X times sine 78 is equal to 25 times sine 46.75. We're gonna move the sine 78 over. And now it becomes X is equal to 25 times sine 46.75 divided by sine 78. This just becomes one calculation. You get x is equal to 18.62. Now you can do each um, part of this calculation separately um, before you go into finding the final answer. You can solve the top first, then the bottom, then divide those two numbers. Um, if you're not that comfortable with your calculator. But either way, we get that our missing side length is 18.62 centimeters. For B, we're trying to find this missing angle A. Now, again, we can check to see if we're going to use cosine law or sine law. The only thing we have right now is two sides and one angle, right? So we could might be enough information to use sine law, except we don't have a full pair or a half pair. We don't have any corresponding angle in its side, right? We're missing this piece here to have a full pair. We're also missing angle A, which we're trying to find, and this unknown angle up here, which would also give us a possible full pair. So we don't have enough information to use the sine law. Cosine law, we do have our sandwiched angle. Right, we have two sides and an angle that is sandwiched or joined between them. So we can use the cosine law to figure out this unknown side. I'm gonna call it little b, so let's call this angle b, and let's just call this angle c. You can label those two whatever you would like if you don't like b or c. So we're gonna find side b using cosine law b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac times cosine b. b squared is equal to 28 squared. So now we're just plugging in information times 20 or plus 23 squared minus 2 times 28 times 23 times cosine 38. b squared equals, I do like to do these two parts separately. So 1,313 is the first part, and then minus the second part, which is 1,014.96. B squared is equal to 298.04. Looks a little big, and if you're thinking that, you'd be correct. We do have to still square root. So don't forget to square root that final answer, and we get a side length of 17.26. So that is our missing side length B, 17.26. Now that we have B, now we have enough information to find our missing angle. We can use our cosine law because we do have all three sides now. We also have enough information to use sine law because we have a full pair and a half pair. Again. I like to use sine law for whatever reason. You can use cosine law if you'd like. Um, it's up to you. You should get the same answer either way. So I'm going to use sine law for the second part just so that we get the combination of the two. So sine of a is e over little a is equal to sine b over little b. Sine of our unknown angle is equal to or over 28 equal to sine 38 over 17.26. Now that we've filled in information, we can cross multiply. 17.26 sine A is equal to 28 times sine 38. I want to get sine A by itself, so I'm going to move the 17.26 over. I get sine A is equal to 28 times sine 38 divided by 17.26. 
this gives me an angle of, um, or not an angle, but sine A is equal to 0 0.82. Again, very similar to the first part of the last question. If I want to get the angle, or any time I'm trying to find the angle, I should be using the inverse as my final step. Zero point, inverse sine 0 0.82. Same answer as previously, I get 55.25 degrees as our missing angle. So again, we might have to use one law to help us find other pieces of information in these triangles and then use either the same law or another law to find the, the indicated piece or the, the information that we're looking for. So it might not be as easy as just doing one calculation, one law to get our answer. It might be a couple steps. So two, two, I'm going to let you try on your own. It's very similar to one that we did in the previous lesson, a little bit different because now we have a right triangle, right? And when we have a right triangle, remember that we can use Sokotoa, right? Our right angle trig. So we don't, we're going to use a combination of um, our trig ratios and the sine and cosine law. So I'll let you try to find this on your own. Again, remember you're looking for this indicated angle up here, you're looking for X. Right. So try to use a combination of your trig ratios and the sine or cosine law to find that missing angle. And you can always refer back to the lesson from yesterday to kind of give you a hint on what to do. So coming back to this question, we started similar to the one from yesterday's lesson. We, we wanted to find this shared side or H that was shared between the two triangles. So what we did first was we looked at the right triangle, we labeled our sides and we figured out what ratio to use to help us find what was considered the hypotenuse. So we ended up using the cosine ratio because we did have the adjacent our reference angle and we were looking for H or the hypotenuse and we found that this shared side had a length of 73.25. Once we found that we we're able to then look at the non right angle triangle and we were able to or we should recognize that once we did a small calculation up here to find that third angle because we knew the other two we could then use our sign our sign law by having this full pair and this half pair to help us find the missing side X. So that's what we did over here in the purple. We found, or we, we plugged in our information, we used our sign law, some very similar to what we've done before, um, to find that missing side, which was then determined to be 48.75. Three is the same thing, except we're given the information and we need to come up with a triangle on our own. So I'll help you draw the triangle and then I'm going to leave you to calculate the missing angle. So again, try to draw it. You don't have to draw it exactly to scale, but you do want to keep it relatively in proportion to what the measurements actually are. So angle A, which is 42 degrees. So let's say this angle A, 42 degrees. We know that side A, which would be across from this angle is 25. And B is 30. So let's say, again, it doesn't really matter which one we choose. Let's just say for sake of argument, this will be angle B. So side B will be 30 and angle C over here will be what we're trying to find. So what can we do? Right. Again, think about what information we have. Is it a right angle triangle? Is it a non right angle triangle? Um, 
And then what, using the information that we have, which law or ratio can we use? And so again, I'm gonna let you try this one on your own and we'll come back with the answer. So we should recognize that based off the information we're given, the only thing we can really do right now is use the sine law to find angle B which is what we did. So we went through, used the sine law, which we should be familiar with now, um, or re-familiar with. We found angle B to be 53.41. Now, in the previous ones, we would then have to use cosine law or sine law again to go through and find the indicated missing piece. However, because we're trying to find the third angle, and now that we have two, all we just have to do is a quick calculation because all angles in a triangle, again, add up to 180 degrees. So by just doing a quick calculation, we find that angle C, the missing piece that we're looking for, has a measure of 84.59 degrees. So the main thing from this lesson is, again, just understanding that you might have to use um, a trig ratio or a law to find a piece of information first that might not be what we're looking for, but then we do use that to, to then find the information that we are looking for. So there might be like a multi-step problem um, that you need to figure out based off of what information we have or that we're given, what can we find? Right? So again, it's not, not doing any new calculations, just kind of combining them um, or doing them multiple times. So please make sure you are familiar with the sine law, cosine law, and the trig ratios because it will be helpful in these types of questions.